This is where I studied Swedish. Hey everybody, Brandon here. For those of you that don't know me, I am a nurse practitioner from the United States who has moved to Sweden. Uh, those of you that do know me know that I've been studying Swedish at the University of Lund and I have good news and I have bad news. So I'm gonna share the good news with you now and I'll save the bad news to the end of the video. So the good news is I passed all of my Swedish course at the University of Lund. So super excited, huge weight lifted off from my head. And I wanted to do a video about would I recommend the Swedish program at the University of Lund uh, to learn Swedish. So I was gonna talk a bit about the pros and the cons. So I'll go over the pros first, and this is a bit of a long video. So I'll have some divisions in the video. That way you can skip ahead to those chapters so that you don't have to watch the whole thing if you want to. So pros, I would say it's Lund. I mean, it's an amazing city. There's lots of good restaurants. It's super student friendly. There's great bicycle access. You don't have to have a car. Um, it's a very old city. It's over a thousand years old. If I remember correctly, I think it's a thousand and nine years old. I could be wrong about that. And lots of old medieval type buildings, cobblestone roads, gardens. It's, it's great. Uh, there's a lot of uh, student specials at lunchtime, so a lot of good eating for good prices. Uh, depending on, of course, what country you come from, but compared to American prices, definitely great. Um, I also really like the fact that there's lots of museums and other activities and things that you can see and do here. Uh, they have good transportation too around the city. Um, there's an app that you can download on your phone and you, you don't have to carry like a bus pass or anything. You just use your phone and you scan the QR code when you get on the bus. It's super, super easy. Uh, another pro is in regards to the actual language and before I get into that I will say the course that I took was Svenska som Fremanda Språk which means Swedish is a foreign language and it is an eight level course. It consists of two terms. You have a fall and a spring term. There's four levels in each term. You can select to just do level one through four or you can select to do levels one through eight and that's what I did. So one of the hugest pros I would say in the program has to do with the instructors. I had amazing instructors the whole way through. And in fact, my first instructor, he went way above and beyond. He would do things like he brought his ukulele to class and he would sing and engage us in singing and we played games and it was a lot of fun, uh, which is really what you need when you're learning a language. You really, really need to use all different parts of your brain so that the words get stuck in your head. And he was so supportive. He was so patient. Um, I, I know it was a very intense program and he was so patient with me. Sometimes I felt like I was asking a lot of dumb questions, but he never made me feel bad. So I had a really good experience with him. Uh, we had a lot of writing assignments and so he would write out uh, very detailed uh, descriptions of what I did good and what I needed to work on. Another positive, which can also be a negative, is the program is very fast. So I heard that there's a lot of other programs that offer the same type of course at other universities. However, it's a year and a half, so it's three terms. Um, I kind of think that that would actually be preferable because you don't feel so rushed. But some people, that may be a pro for them is to learn the language as fast as they can because they come here and they want to work and they just want to get the course done for whatever reason. Uh, so that can be a pro. Another pro that I actually personally benefited from was pedagogical support. So I have an autism uh, spectrum diagnosis. So that's a learning disability. And because of that, there are certain things that I need to be able to function well in a learning environment. And they make sure to let you know at the beginning of the program, if that's something that you need, these are the steps you need to go through. So it's very clearly defined as to what I do. If I had any questions, I could ask those questions. I never felt bad. I never felt like a burden. They were super, super supportive. They always made sure I was comfortable, that I had everything that I needed. And so I was actually, for myself, I was able to get a private room for testing, which was super, super helpful. And of course, I uh, at some times I had other things that I needed, uh, like I needed to make sure I had a, a, a clock in the room uh, that I could see um, and some other things like that. So 
you know, you just tell them what you need, you give them the medical diagnosis and the paperwork to support that, and they will take care of that. Now for the negatives. So one of the biggest ones for me, and this doesn't apply to everybody, is the cost. So for me, it was almost $13,000, and that's counting books. Now, from my perspective as an American, I felt that the textbooks were a little bit cheaper than in America. Uh, one of the common books that we use is called Rivstart. Um, so like this one, I've got the price tag still on the back here. Can you see it there? Yeah. So it is 40, 489 Swedish crowns, so that's about $50 American. I felt that was kind of reasonable, but I heard from a lot of people that they felt that the textbooks were extremely expensive. So that's one thing too, is you will be having to buy a lot of books for the course, and if you come from a country that's outside of the European Union, you're going to have to pay for the course. And you can pay for it in two chunks, so you can pay for the first term, and then when you're done with the first term, you can pay for the second term. That's what I did. Now, um, for those of you that live in the EU, then you have the ability to go to the class pretty much for free, um, is what I've been told by my fellow European classmates. And we had people from everywhere. We had Australians, Canadians, Irish, Africa, different countries in Africa. We had a lot of people from the Middle East. We had people from Asia and all over Europe. Um, so it was a really nice diverse group. I was a little awkward at first thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to be the oldest one in the class, but no, don't feel that way. I was actually uh, not the oldest one in the class. It was a very diverse group. We had very, very young people and we had older, more mature students too. We had all sorts of backgrounds. Some of us hadn't taken any college courses and some of us had masters or even PhD degrees. So it was really cool getting to, um, you know, be with everybody. Um, so, so yeah, so cost is definitely something to think about. It's an extremely intense program. That's another con. Uh, I will say for the majority of us, we were extremely stressed out. There was a very high attrition rate. You'd see like a ton of students at the beginning of each course. At the end, you'd see that like a huge chunk of people had dropped out. And for a lot of them, it was an option for them, but for someone like myself who's paying for the course, it really wasn't an option. I had to commit, I had to stay all the way through. And since it's so intense, you really can't work, you cannot be taking other courses. Um, if you have children, you need to make sure that there's someone to help take care of the children um, while you're doing the courses. So if, it, if that's too intense for you, I would say there is another option and that is a halftime course that's on their website you can look at. A lot of us in the course, we didn't know that that existed. Um, it was kind of hard to find that information, but then when some of us found out, we switched to that version. Um, for me, it wasn't an option. Like I said, I'm from the US, so I had to be engaged in full-time studies. I couldn't do half-time studies, so I had to commit and do that. Also, I wanted to get it done so that I could get my nursing license here in Sweden. So yeah, so that's something to think about. Uh, another thing is, that's a negative is in regards to the weather. So for me, it was fine. That's one reason I moved to Sweden is I like cold weather. I come from Texas. I hate the heat. Uh, I always feel like, hey, if you're cold, you can do something about it. Just put on more clothes with heat. You can only take off so much. But yeah, here in Sweden, it's not just the cold. It's also the darkness. So for us in the winter time, you're already stressed out with your course. And then I'll add on top of that, if you're not taking your vitamin D and you're not getting outside as much as you should be, um, it can lead to depression, anxiety, other issues like that. So that's something else to think about too when you're taking this course. Um, just some more little tidbits of information. There were people that actually took the course even knowing that it's intense and they shouldn't be taking other classes and they shouldn't be working. And it really affected them. A lot of them had to quit the course and go into something else. A lot of them were not able to make good enough grades to move on to the next levels. So that's definitely something to really weigh the costs of. So the bad news, the bad news is my Swedish is still not good enough. <laughs> so even though a lot of people have told me, oh my goodness, you speak so much Swedish. You've only been in Sweden since August of 2021, so less than a year. And you've only been studying Swedish since like August 31st. So, you know, nine, 10 months and there are people that live in Sweden that still don't speak the language or don't speak it very well. That being said, I still don't speak it good enough to take my nursing examination. I've actually gotten some course material, some preparatory tests and things like that, and I was going through it and 
you know, the cool thing about the language is I speak so much and when I read the majority of stuff, I understand, you know, like I said, it's been so fast, nine, 10 months, I can read like 90 to 95% and understand. Uh, I mean, if it's a technical like engineering manual, probably not, there's, I might be more like 75, 70%. Uh, but for your general everyday stuff, like for example, if you're on the tax agency website, I can understand almost everything there. The problem lies for me in being able to communicate with people, uh, so me expressing myself and then me understanding them. So here in Sweden, you have a lot of different dialects. Here where I live, I'm in Skåne, so it's the south part of Sweden. There is a particular dialect, but it's not just Skåne. Skåne is broken up even further into different cities that have their own regional dialects. And so that becomes a big challenge. You know, I thought America had a lot of dialects, you know, like a Texas accent and New York, Boston, New Jersey, that sort of thing. There's way more variation. And there's only 10.5 million people in Sweden, and yet you still have so much variation of dialects. So that is a big challenge uh, for me learning the language. And I, I still feel I struggle expressing myself and hearing people. So my hope is maybe in six more months, I'll be at a good level to take my Swedish examination uh, for nursing. I actually have asked to cancel it. It was set for August 26, but I have been told, I was kind of depressed and discouraged about it and people were like, oh, don't worry about it because that's like super, super early when you try to apply. You know, you've only been here. It, you were gonna have been here a year and you're already taking the thing uh and you had no knowledge of swedish a year ago so don't feel too bad about it so i'm trying not to beat myself up about it but you know when you have a certain date in your mind and you don't achieve that goal it can be a little frustrating so yeah so i decided there are some courses at lund that are medical terminology courses to help people coming from other countries that are say like doctors or nurses to learn medical terminology and those are broken up in small little courses that you can do online. So that's what I'm gonna do is take those courses over the next six months and hopefully by the end of the year, I'll be ready to take my nursing examination. So that's kind of what's going on. Would I recommend this course? It really depends. I can't say yes or no. For me, I would definitely take it again based on my circumstances if there weren't any other options. There are no other options. So yes, definitely take it. I think the instructors are great. I think the material is fantastic. Really the only downside for me is the fact that it is very, very fast. Uh, but for some people, that might be something that they're looking for. If you're looking for something not quite so intense, go for the halftime program or see if you can get into something like SFE. Another tip that I have is learn as much Swedish as you can before you even get into the program. I knew nothing when I started except, like I said, basic like salutations, the thank you and please and all that kind of thing. Uh, try to learn more, you'll be a bit ahead of the curve. But one thing I did notice, even though we had a lot of people that could speak quite a bit of Swedish in the program, um, we kind of met, you know, they bring you up to their level. So I felt really ashamed about my level of Swedish starting out, but you always end up catching up if, you know, you apply yourself in the course. So hopefully that's helpful information. I know it was hard for me to find much information on the internet about it myself. And it's nice to be able to hear from someone who's already gone through it. And, you know, I'm not getting paid by the school. I'm not getting any reimbursement. This is just my own personal experience. And I know that the majority of my classmates would probably say the same thing about how they felt about this course. So if you have any more questions, feel free to comment below. And like I said, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps me keep doing this. And you all have a wonderful day.